In this video we're going to take a look at the Flag in Space Challenge from the Space Heroes CTF. It's a web challenge and we've been given this URL to connect to, which if we open it up, we've got this series of black boxes on the screen. So we might want to take a look at the source, see is there anything of interest in here. It doesn't look like there is. We could have a play around with this get parameter to see if we can do any fuzz in here. Maybe we can actually access the etc password. Nope, maybe we could try that with some dot dot slashes as well. But we don't get anything of interest. However, if we try to put in what we expect the flag format to be, which is shctf, and enter that, we actually get the first part of the flag. So it looks like this will hold the flag, and if we can essentially brute force each character, we'll be able to recover the whole thing. So there's a couple of ways we could do that. We could use some kind of brute forcing tool like ffuff. And to do that, first of all, we can use a tool like crunch. So we can do crunch11 to generate a list of one character words. And then we can specify our word list. I'm going to use user share, or our char list, should I say, crunch char set. And then we'll say that we want to use the mix alpha numeric all space. Let's send that to a file called words. You can see it's generated 95 lines. Let's open that up and see what it looks like. So there we go, we've got all lowercase, all uppercase, and our numbers and special characters as well. Awesome, let's take out this these blank lines, we're not going to need those. Let's close that down. And let's go and grab our request for FFUF. So you could do this a couple of ways, you could provide the URL and stuff. What I'm going to do is just open up a new dot request and paste this in and we can say here we want to fuzz this character first of all and now we'll go over to ffuf and we'll do ffuf-c for colored output we'll pass in our request new dot request our request protocol is http our mode is cluster bomb a lot of this doesn't matter and we can probably actually just use the defaults but and then our word list is the words file that we just created so let's run that first of all it runs through we're getting back all the responses essentially what we can look at here is the difference in the length of the response so in this case we have got 131 whereas all the others were 129 so it looks like 2 is the correct response and the reason we're getting that is because the output the response that's being returned has one extra character so we can essentially say that each time we get a new character, we're going to have to increase this lines from 129 to 131 here. So it'll be by two each time. So let's filter by lines. Let's add in dash FL. Uh, to begin with, we want to filter off 129. And that comes back with our result of two. So let's go and update this. Let's go and put in a two at the beginning of this. And we're going to run it again, and this time we're going to need to increase that by 2. So the number of lines we want to filter is 131. We run through it and we get that underscore, so just going to go and quickly add an underscore here. We need to increase that again to 133. This time we get an E, so we'll go back and do that. Save. Again, 135. We get an X. There's probably a better way to do this with fbuff, or you could automate it with a bash script or something like that. but Another way we could do this would be to use a Python script. So let me just open up a new file and let me copy over the script. So we've got a simple script here. We've got our URL to begin with. We know it begins with shctf and the curly brace. We're going to do an initial request just to see what the length is whenever we provide an invalid character, so a null byte in this case. It tells us what the length is initially and then we're going to keep looping through until we get that ending curly brace and then we know we've got the full flag. I'm going to loop through, actually I had this set to string.printable originally, but it turns out that the flag only has lowercase digits and our curly braces and underscores in it. So just to save a bit of time, we'll change our character set here. And we loop through each character in our character set. We make a request with the URL and that character that we're testing. And if the length of the response is greater than the previous response we tested, we know that's going to be the correct character for that iteration. So we'll update our URL and then we'll be able to go and continue for the next one. We'll print it out as we go just so we can see how quickly it's running. Break whenever we do get the correct value here. 
and then at the end just give us the flag. So that's that, let's try it out. This was quite slow. I think actually it's probably quicker just to go through this manually. Let's just say, let's do our 137 there as well. We've already got that one saved. So the next one is P. Let's have a look at our scan. So yeah, it's got the first character was a 2. And we've got the underscore. We've got an E. Okay, so it depends where the character is. If we're going through all of the lowercase characters first, before we check the numbers, obviously it's going to take longer to get a number than it will to get a character that's towards the beginning of the alphabet. What I should have probably done actually was tested the underscore first, because the underscore is likely to come up a few times in the flag as it's used to separate words. So that would have speeded things up even more. Okay, I'll leave this running, I'll speed up the process. Okay, so it took about two minutes for that to complete and we got back our flag, CHCTF to explore frontier. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.